Coffin's all-time most memorable Christmas gift, get this, was a dial-up modem in the mid-90s. So mm -hmm. Stefan loves technology, mm -hmm. uh, and I think he also has a natural talent for managing it. Uh, Stefan graduated in 2008 from UT with a degree in business administration, and since then he has sold one business, and then he went on to grow Elysia Technology, his current company. Uh, from a one-man band to the largest managed services provider in Bluff County with over 40 employees. Olivia is a certified great place to work for three years in the running now. That's a great accomplishment, Stephen. Um, and they serve over 430 unique clients while managing almost 4,000 individual computers. So definitely Stephen is using his natural talent there. Uh, Stephen and his wife, Nicole, have six children ages 10 and under. So you're a busy, a busy guy there, Stephen. Yep. Uh, his bucket list includes items like serve a church as its pastor and be an over-the-road truck driver. I asked Stephen, i, I got to know what that means, and he said exactly what it, what it says. He would love to drive the, across our countryside at least one time uh, in, a, in a truck. So let's welcome Stephen. <coughs> Thank you, Melissa. I can uh, I cannot vouch for um, my wife's willingness to be an over-the-road truck driver with me, but you know, hey, we'll get there one day. Uh, so, as she said, my name is Stephen Wilson. Um, I'm the benevolent overlord of Olivia Technology. I love that title. I stole it from an NPR show, uh, but it's perfect because sometimes I have to exercise. Most of the time, I want to be benevolent, right? We as leaders want to be loving, caring for our people. But sometimes you got to put the overlord hat on and say, hey, this is, this is what we got to do. I mean, this is about the mission. Let's go. So I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan. So many Simon Sinek fans in here? Yep, Simon Sinek. So start with why. If you haven't read it, you should. It's a great book. So why am I here? Um, I've used, I, I'm not a professional speaker. I'm not a professional trainer. If you call me after this and say, hey, can you help me? I, I mean, maybe. Like, if you buy me lunch, I guess I work pretty cheap. But... Um, I view my business as a ministry for the gospel of Jesus, and part of that is inspired by this, C12. So I'm part of an organization called C12. This is the care matrix, right? So we have physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs of employees, customers, and community. I am here today because of this. So for me, this is where I land. So I'm serving you, my community hopefully emotionally, spiritually, maybe physically, tactically, with some things that you can take back to your workplaces and implement, stuff that we have seen that works uh, for us, for other clients, maybe stuff we, haven't, we have seen that doesn't work. So for you, we're really kind of in this area here. So what can you do, and even for customers, I would argue as well, what can you do for your employees, for your customers, uh, with regard to remote work? Now, the title of this um, Melissa, you didn't go with my clickbaity title. Do you remember my clickbaity title? No, I don't remember. It was why everything you why everything you know about remote work is wrong. That was my clickbaity title. Um, but the the new rules portion, you probably showed up thinking, oh, cool, he's going to give us rules for employees and things like that. I got bad news for you. I got rules for you. <laughs> I got rules for you as an employer. What you can do uh, to help. Uh, in, in the area of remote work. So, why are you here? Here we go, audience participation part. Oh, by the way, a little housekeeping thing. I, I'm, I don't ask for questions at the end. It's kind of this awkward silence where we all stare at each other. So if you have questions, I talk a lot and I talk fast. So you better just <coughs> raise your hand and say, hey, I got a question, and we'll jump in here in the middle of the presentation. So, why are you here? Go. To learn. To learn. Does anybody have remote workers today? Okay, has anybody had remote workers in the past? A few, okay. Anybody got full-time remote people? We got a couple full-time remote, cool, awesome. Why else are you here, anybody else? To prepare for the future. Prepare for the future, yeah, because it's not going anywhere, right? It's here, we might as well figure it out. Um, why talk about remote work? Why is it important? Why, why even talk about it? It's changing, it's evolving right now, and uh, you know, as a company, we're Yeah, like in terms of uh, in office, hybrid, full remote. Blend, not, you know. Yeah, okay. So uh, kind of along with that predicting the future sort of thing, navigating the path. Yep. 
Why else is this important? Why is this relevant? Well, because employees that you're trying to hire seem to be, uh, a lot of them might want it. You don't want to lose out on that employee pool that we're trying to make. Yeah, differentiation, right? Because you got people coming in and they're, they're looking at two employers. One of them's based in California paying them $100,000. One of them's based here and I got to be in the office and spend me $60,000. What am I going to do? Am I going to work full remote for the company in California or am I going to work in person for the one that pays me 60%, right? This is the reality uh, of the environment in which we work. What do you think? Is remote work a fad? Why? Why isn't it a fad? Well, we've seen that it works. Seen that it works, okay. Why else? Technology. Technology. It's not going anywhere, right? <clears throat> it's getting better. It's not getting worse, <clears throat> right? Why else? Federal government's dropped a bunch of money into uh, rural fiber. I mean, we're obviously mm. making a commitment as a nation to supply rural fiber to uh, everybody so that people can use remote work. Yeah, yeah. Kids can go to school. So yeah, there's money getting thrown at this too, COVID, right? COVID's kind of mm -hmm. amped that up. Yeah, so, so this is an interesting question. Do you think, um, imagine for a world where COVID didn't happen, do you think we would be here now having this conversation? Oh, no. No, right? Not at this moment. Ah, there you go. But eventually, my yeah. company is entirely remote and has been since 2010. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I think COVID, you know, if I put on my technology prognosticator hat, COVID condensed probably, you know, somewhere between five and ten, 10 years of technological progress into about 18 months, right? So it, it really put a crunch on there. We experienced that, Olivia did. Part of the reason, you know, that we were able to grow from one to 44 was COVID. Everybody's calling us going, <gasps> I got to work from home. Like government shut me down. I can't see patients. I can't do things. I got to work from home. So it's not a fad. Um, what you need to think about is how does remote work impact your mission? So first of all, I'm assuming that you have a mission. <laughs> so you need to have a mission, an articulated mission statement that you know, ideally that your team knows, in a perfect world that your clients know. You gotta start there. If you don't have that, you're behind, in my opinion. You're not gonna make wise decisions about remote work unless you have a mission you can point to and say, hey, this is why this matters. So, I can hear this song in my head, thanks to <laughs> primarily to this show. Um, Heath got it. Thank you, Heath. Um, so, who are you? So, uh, give me, give me. I don't. We can go around the room. We can do this. However, you can tell us your company name. You cannot tell us your company name. Whatever. I just want to know. First rule of public speaking is know your audience. So, ten seconds or Enjoy less. Enjoy LaForce. LaForce Insurance Agency. Insurance Agency. Okay. Before very common, especially trouble killing bugs living the dream. Killing bugs living the dream. <laughs> 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 uh, Krista Jones, M4 Staffing, Tech Over Virtual performance food service, so food service distribution. Okay. Matthew Mopahead, LDA Engineering, Civil Engineering. Okay. Jim Albert, LDA Services, providing services to engineers and other competitors. Okay. All right. So you guys sit together on purpose? Engineers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Greg Rowe, Second Act Temporary Employment Agency. Okay. Lisa Young, Media, Advertising and Marketing. Okay. Kyle Perkins, Rosewood Virtual Tours. Anita Parker, Spentley Home Inspection. Debbie Set Off, Area Wide Development Corporation. We do the SBA Travel Tour lines for the federal government. Sarah Calkin, Express Strategic Services, we're a marketing agency. Okay. Sebastian Lambert, Computer Systems Plus, Action Services. Cool. Christina Baker, I'm a Director of Talent Management for Tulsa City State Community College. Okay. Melissa Spangler, Kappa Consulting, passionate about helping people grow personally and professionally, and I am a business coach and do training and development and consulting. Our behind the scenes folks, can you guys want to introduce yourselves to? <coughs> Come on, Mitchell. Help me. Uh, Mitchell with Mitchell Bain Photography. <laughs> and I'm Jenny O'Malley, I'm the social media manager for Blunt Partnership. Okay, so we got a good mix here. We got some construction, we got some HR, we got some media, we got some field services, we got some insurance. Uh, we got a good mix. So this is interesting to me that it, this is sort of touching almost every industry, right? Um, 
in, in some way, shape, or form. So this is Olivia as it sits today. Um, blood, sweat, and tears to get here. Um, so, you know, we've got a, a, a good amount of people, and we're trying to decide, you know, with all these people, COVID hits, what do we do? Who, who gets to work remote? Who can work remote? Who shouldn't work remote? Who should be in the office? We're sort of trying to answer all these questions. So my hope with this presentation is that um, you get a little bit of um, wisdom is knowledge plus experience, right? So <clears throat> you can have the knowledge about remote work, but until you experience it, either yourself or through someone else's eyes, you don't have knowledge, right? So my goal hopefully is to impart some knowledge to you today. What did we do that made us successful through this transition? What did we see clients do that were good at it? And what did we see clients do who were bad at it, right? Um, and we'll, we'll get into more of that here in a second. So um, we got a, a, a Venn diagram here of my, my, my hope was we get some biology. Hope you brought your science hats. Uh, a little organizational psychology. Simon Sinek is what I would describe as an organiza organizational psychologist. What did we learn? And a little bit of spirituality here on uh, how and why this is important. So hopefully by the end, I land right smack dab in the middle of all this. Uh, we'll see if it, and if it all falls apart or not. Uh, but hopefully that's where I kind of want you to be. It's like when, you, when you're sitting at the dinner table tonight <coughs> and your significant other says, how was your day? And you're like, I went to this presentation and we talked about a lot of things, but I landed here. This is where I landed kind of in the middle of all this. So what does, what does survey show? So notice the date. I purposely pulled kind of a slightly older presentation uh, data here. Remember where you were, January 2021. Right, the world ended March of the previous year. I remember my kids, my kids go to Maryville City Schools. They came home for spring break, right, in March, and never went back, right, well, you know, for a while. So what does the data show? So 83% of employers say shift to remote work has been successful for their company. So notice 83% of employers, right? So that's, that's pretty good. That's really good, 83 out of 100. 87% of employees say the office is important for collaborating with team members and building relationships. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm throwing some weird information at you here. Only 5% of executives say that employees don't need to be in the office to maintain company culture. So the inverse of that is what? 95% say employees need to be in the office to maintain company culture. So we have, <laughs> we'll get there, <laughs> we'll get there. So we have some interesting statistics happening. Um, for us, our model at Olivia is we, we hire good people, good humans. We try to suss out who is a good human and we can teach you the technical things. Yeah, you gotta be interested in it. Yeah, you need to have a passion for it, but I'm not necessarily looking for a ton of expertise on the front end. I want to know, can you serve people? Can you take care of people? Do you care about the client calling you in, calling in on the phone? So respondents of the survey with the least amount of professional experience, so zero to five years, are more likely to want to be in the office more often. Why? To learn, right? 30% of them prefer being remote no more than one day a week versus just 20% of all respondents. The least experienced workers are also more, more likely to feel less productive while working remotely. Duh. If you show up to a new job and you're full remote and you can't ask the person in the cubicle, hey, which, which printer do I print to again? Right? Like if, if you don't have that knowledge, you're going to feel less productive. So hopefully I'm, I'm purposefully throwing some pros and cons at you here. So <clears throat> I thought this stat was interesting. So this is real estate strategy in transition as companies anticipate multiple changes. Again, going back to January 2021, 61% said they're gonna consolidate office space in at least one premier business district location, implying that they would close other locations. And I don't know if y'all know this, but real estate's expensive. So when you're trying to predict, and the, those timelines are longer, right? I've done two construction projects in my tenure at Olivia. They were both really expensive and they both took a long time. So you try to get out ahead of it and predict and see you can follow the money, right? 
So where are we now-ish? This was kind of middle of last year. 35%, so over a third of job holders can work from home full-time and 23% do so part-time. So how about your organizations? Does that statistic dry, jive with your organizations? We know you're, you get, you're full remote. Are you, are you the only one in here that's everybody is full remote? You're full remote? Okay. Full remote now? Okay. What about everybody else? We got a mix? No, I don't have an office. Don't have an office. Full so, remote. so full remote. Okay. You got an office. Nobody's remote. Nobody's remote. So everybody's in office. Okay. All right. How about in office? Is everybody... In, the remainder of balance in office, pretty much? Okay, okay. Um, th so this one, uh, are you hiring? Raise your hand if you're hiring. Everybody hiring? This matters. 87%, if given the option to work remotely, they'll take you up. So you gotta be sure that you're competitive in the marketplace especially when 87% of the people are saying, yeah, if they had that option, I'd take it, right? Because they're going to want the flexibility. So uh, this, I, I pulled this one. I was like working on this presentation, and I'm at the doctor office, dentist with my kid, and I'm scrolling LinkedIn, and I just literally took a screenshot on my phone. So this is not an employee choice. The CEO of Morgan Stanley gets real and says employees can't simply choose to work remotely. Morgan Stanley CEO James Gorman said that just as employees' salaries and promotions weren't their choice, working remotely for a week wasn't either. Ugh. Youch. Uh, this one over here, working hours flexibility is the main reason for increased productivity. And the question was essentially why? So, okay, work hours flexibility, <laughs> excuse me, work hours flexibility, less or no time spent commuting. I don't necessarily think we have this problem in Blount County. Uh, I wouldn't have thought we had it in Knoxville either, but I got a buddy who uh, works for a quasi-governmental agency, and uh, his commute was, I don't know, 20 minutes, and he whines about his commute. He's like, I, just, I, don't, I don't have to commute anymore. It's great. I love it. And they're trying to get us to go back in the office, and I don't want to do it because of my commute. I'm like, dude, you drive like 20 minutes. Like, what's the big deal? He's like, yeah, but add it up. It's 40 minutes a day. And what if there's a traffic jam? And you got all these things, right? So some of these things, we have to listen more than we talk, right? And so you can see some of these respondents as well. Um, some people did say my productivity has not increased. There's a variety, there could be a variety of reasons for that. And we'll get into those more here in a second. So here we go. We are going to divide into four groups. I haven't counted you, so I don't know how many there are. You're going to choose a team name, and you're going to elect a scribe. You got 60 seconds. Are you ready? Go. Better than them. <laughs> All right, we got a scribe for everybody. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So you guys, better than them, you guys are writing employer pros for remote work. So you are the perspective of the employer. You're giving me pros for remote work. Brainiacs, you guys are employer cons for remote work. So you guys are putting your employer hat. You don't want people to remote work, okay? Better than you, right? You guys are employee pros for remote work. This should be pretty easy. You have somebody full-time remote on your team. So you guys are the last one, employee cons for remote work. Everybody got it? Two minutes, go. Give me as many as you can. All right, here we go. Uh, let's go reverse order. Let's start. Let's start over here. So who's your scribe? You're, you're the scribe, and you guys were. Tell us all what you were. You're the wall, and your goal was to write for for employees. So this is employee cons for remote work. Okay. So what do you got? So we have uh, technological issues. Maybe your computer doesn't work, and like you said, you can't ask somebody beside you uh, with friends. Okay. Um, social conversations, you feel isolated because you don't have others directly interacting with you. Yep. Um, that kind of rolls into we can't collaborate with, with others as well because we are, um, it's a less of a human connection. Right. Uh, we also have lack of motivation um, due to uh, other remote work. So maybe going into the office 
even if everybody else is working remote, it feels like there's nobody empty. There. Yeah. yeah, there's an emptiness, um, inspiring conversation. So definitely the biological human connection side of it okay. was what we came on there, um, as well as difficulty doing um, training onboarding for new individuals because it's over the phone instead of us being able to be person and do some uh, uh, emotional intelligence. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, better than you. Yeah. <laughs> You're the scribe. Yes. You were, tell us again, employer? Yeah, we were pros for employee. Employee. Employee, employee pros. Okay. okay. What you got? So we uh, said no commute. Um, and also, like a general, I like to help with productivity. Mm -hmm. um, flexibility. I guess if you need to run an errand or something in the middle of the day, you can. Uh, you know, you can just extend your schedule. You're not like more locked in. You're less locked into your office yeah. space. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, your workspace in general, you have a little bit more control on how you want to set it up. Um, we put snacks and pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> Business up top. Pajamas <laughs> up um, If you are offered remote work, you might feel more trusted by your employer. Okay. Um, on the trust. Yep. Um, less distractions, possibly. Um, I guess the pet, you don't want to be sitting in front of your TV, but it could work like <coughs> if your office, if you, there's a lot of chit chat and stuff. Sure. Yep. Possibly less distractions. Uh, forced to improvise. Kind of the opposite. We were saying, like, if you do have, like, technical, like, uh, technology issues. You gotta figure kinda, it out, right? Yeah, yeah. you're kind of forced to figure yeah. it out. Could yeah. it? I would also say that that's kind of like a remote worker's snow day. Yes. The <laughs> people won't boot up. It's yeah. a new one FedEx next day. It will show up on my doorstep. Yeah, and I think the last one we had is just like a feeling of autonomy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Brainiac, you were. Employer comp. Employer comp. Right. So, okay. All right. What's that? Well, especially the nature of the business, if you have um, people working the people type business, like education or healthcare, mm -hmm. um, just that has a big impact on being able to have that connection with people as you work with them. Right. Um, there could be a culture of negativity of other remote workers. They get to work remote. I don't get to. Okay. A little bit of I jealousy there. A little maybe. jealousy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, difficulty with um, collaboration and yeah. management challenges that you have with that. Okay. Uh, connection with others right. in your workplace. Um, retention could be a problem if you um, don't feel like you can handle that kind of work well mm -hmm. or don't have a connection not satisfactory for, you, okay. uh, for your people. And uh, look, with new employees, it's really difficult for lack of management. You can't really get in there and manage them face to face like you can right. remotely. And this uh, disconnect to growth opportunities. So okay. if there's a way to move up or move around, you don't really you know, have a connection to that or know what it is. Okay, okay, all right. Better than them. <laughs> uh, you guys were employer pros. Okay. Working remote. So um, we can pull talent from bigger areas. We're not just hitting local. So you can look for talent um, anywhere. Space, low overhead. You're not having to buy bigger space with more desks, that sort of thing. Yep. Um, less in office drama, um, which does happen depending. Um, it can happen without an office too. but. Um, but overall, I think we were talking about uh, better bottom line, saving money, making more money potentially. Um, I have a client that when they've been remote for the past two and a half years, they have less error rate. They have people working from home have claimed less distractions, like people not stopping by, saying what's up, and all that. More focused at home, their error rate, it's a financial institution. and. Um, less than 1% error right now okay. um, going home. So as they're trying to have everybody come back, right. um, go up. hybrid, they expect people to leave okay. because they don't feel like they should have to because they've proven that they can do it from home. Yeah. Uh, it's more expensive. Okay. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So, who wins? <laughs> Which way are we going? This, this is the tension to be managed, right? So if you're viewing hybrid or remote work as a yes or no question with winners and losers, then you've already lost. 
That's the, that's the wrong question. I had a pastor that said, if you have to ask, should I go to church or not, that's the wrong question, right? If, if, you're, if you're viewing this as, do we have to do this or not do this, and there's, I'm going to win and the employee's going to lose, or the employee's going to win and I'm going to lose, you're already off track. Uh, so you got, you got to do some self-assessment and go backwards a little bit. Anybody know what this screen cap, what movie this is from? Says, it's in Latin. Uh, it's not. No. This is from my all-time favorite movie, The Matrix. This is exactly. This is Timit Timit Noske. I'm not. I don't speak Latin. If anybody, if anybody wants to correct me on my pronunciation, please feel free to do so. Timit Noske, which means know thyself. So I don't know if you remember this scene, but Keanu Keanu Reeves Neo goes to see the Oracle. And the oracle is supposed to tell him he's the one. But what does she do? He goes in. She says, you've got the gift, but something's holding you back. She says, see that sign up there? She points to that sign, and this is that scene. She says, it means know thyself. You don't know yourself enough to execute to your full potential. So my encouragement to you is to know your business know your clients, know your employees well enough to execute to its full potential. Now, how do you do that? So, anybody know who this is? Who is it? This is CEO, uh, Bob Iger. That's right, it's Bob Iger. So, CEO times two. So, he is now on his second round of the CEO at Disney. What do you think he had to say about remote work? Think about Disney. Okay, think about what you know of Disney. Think about their product. Think about their market. Put your business hat on. I think it has to be a mix, okay? Other opinions? What do y'all think? Some, something about encouraging creativity? Yep, yep. Creativity is the heart and soul of who we are and what we do at Disney. And in a creative business like ours, nothing can replace the ability to connect, observe, and create with peers that comes from being physically together, nor the opportunity to grow professionally by learning from leaders and mentors. And just to hit you with some data, um, he took Disney from over 15 years. I may have that somewhere. Nope, I don't have it somewhere. He took Disney over the course of 15 years from something like a market cap of like 47 billion to like 287 billion. Okay, so this guy, like dramatic, they acquired Lucasfilm under him, right? They did major acquisitions under him, and this is what he had to say about remote work. Now, <laughs> we'll get to this in a moment, but I want you to remember this when we, when we talk about a section here a little bit later on in the presentation. Okay, so knowing your data. So we kind of alluded to this earlier about productivity, about error rate. If your business's metric to gauge employee productivity is management by walking around, and yes, that is a real tenant of management philosophy, you will feel completely lost when it comes to evaluating productivity in a remote world. You can't do it. How do you do it? You got no data. You got no metrics. Timit Noske, know thyself. You don't know yourself if you have employees working from home and you have no gauge of data to be productive. We, this is like a, um, a refrain <laughs> at Alivia. Good people can and do prop up poor processes. So if you have poor processes, but you got good people running them, it'll be all right. But imagine if you had good people and good processes. How much more could you get done? How much more effective could you be for your mission? Uh, how much more margin could you have, et cetera? Um, I'm a huge book nerd. So, you know, Good to Great by Jim Collins, classic. Uh, anybody read Traction, Gino Wickman? Anybody executing Traction in their organization? So, yep, we just started. We rolled out Traction last week. So we've been planning it for about nine months. So um, last year I said we were doing Traction by Training Wheels. So this year we're actually doing it. <clears throat> and this is a great book as well, The Four Disciplines of Execution, 40X. Um, read those books. If you don't have sort of metrics or, or not sure where to start with data, uh, these, are, these are great books to read. All right, questions you need to answer. If I was alone on a desert island, uh, this is assuming you have remote workers, okay? 
and, and I think we've established there is a need and a want to have a policy around remote work, right? Every, every one of us as employers, as HR, as whatever, business owners, we need to think through these things ideally beforehand. Because I can tell you, when you have an offer to an employee and they're like, hey, that's cool, I've been through your three-stage interview process and you've made me an offer and I want to accept, but I want to do hybrid, that's the wrong time to decide whether or not you want to do hybrid. You need to have a policy and establish this well beforehand. So if you were alone on a desert island, how would you know if employees are productive? If you got one postcard a day in the mail via seagulls, that analogy didn't quite hold up, um, how would you know if your employees are being productive? I love this. What is a lead measure to produce the lag result? We are so lag driven in our organizations. Profit and loss, customer response, ship on time, project completed timeline. Those are all lag measures, right? What are the lead measures to produce the lag result? This is a totally different way of thinking. Um, one of my favorite examples in 40X is a construction company. They were trying to reduce uh, accidents. Well, that's a lag result, right? The accidents already happened. So how do you improve employee safety? I don't know. How do you improve employee safety? Training, equipment, PPE, right? You have to do these lead indicators and they tracked those lead measures to produce that lag result. So you need to answer these questions, especially, y'all, my advice, whether or not you have remote work or not, you should be answering these questions, right? So here's the good news. Winners want to win. If you have hired winners, and ideally you have, uh, they want to win. They want to execute. They want to do the thing. They want to win in the marketplace. Um, how do winners know they're winning? Basketball team, playing basketball. How do they know they're winning? Score, scoreboard. Do you have a scoreboard in your business that employees can look at that's updated and ideally in near real time, color coded? Can I look at it in three seconds or less and tell whether or not I'm winning in my role today? Yes or no? You need that. Whether they're in office or remote, you, you got to have that. Winners want to know the score. That's a concept of 40X as well. You got to have a scoreboard. Now, you, you as a coach, your scoreboard is more complex, right? You're tracking more data, you're tracking more variables, you're trying to figure out, okay, well, we had 15 leads and we sat 10 appointments and we closed one, right? So you have a lot more going on. But for the people that are uh, soliciting the leads, they're gonna have a lead measure, right? Versus the people that are meeting with the, with the potential client, they're gonna have a different measure. So all of these are lead indicators you need to be knowing and you can use this to your advantage. Do you think LeBron James would play basketball if there was no scoreboard? Do you think Tom Brady would not go into retirement if there was no potential for a Super Bowl? Right? Winners want to win. And if they can't win with you, they're going to go win somewhere else. So create an, an environment where they can win and where they know they're winning. Anybody know what BHAG is? Give me the PC version. <laughs> Big, hairy, audacious goal, right. So do you have a BHAG? What's your BHAG, both corporately, collectively, individually? <clears throat> Anybody know what rocks? That's a traction concept. Attraction people know it. Rocks, right? So rocks is kind of the Stephen Covey thing about this is your day. If you put sand in first and then middle rocks and big rocks, you have no more room in your day. But if you reverse the order and work on the big stuff first, then put the medium stuff, then put the sand, it all fits in your day. I have people, uh, there are folks at Olivia that everything is a five alarm fire, right? I think we all know some of those folks. Uh, guess what? It's not a five alarm fire. Um, it's pretty easy to reestablish and readjust. But again, we got to know what the score is. What's the score? What am I working on? What's my rock? What's my BHAG? What am I aiming toward? In my mind, an incredible culture is one in which the team members, not the leader, hold themselves accountable to the metrics. So if you've got people working remote, how you need to answer this question, how are they holding themselves accountable to the metrics? It's going to get real old, real fast, when a leader has to stand behind them and tap them on the shoulder every 30 minutes. Hey, hey, 
pay for every day. It's going to get real old real quick for both the leader and the employee. So how do you create a culture where the team members, not the leader, hold themselves accountable to the metrics? So um, Olivia, um, we started basically in office, right? Come to work. Uh, we're part of our business is essentially a call center. So you call in for tech support and we help. We've got some hardware, we've got some infrastructure guys that go out and pull cable and that sort of stuff. But primarily, we are in office. This is a screenshot from our system. This is uh, ConnectWise Manage. I can, at a glance, see the employee's level of productivity. Green is good, yellow is not quite there, and red is bad, okay? So I blotted out some client names here, but when they are doing the work, the nature of getting the work done tracks their time. It is not a separate thing. This is critical. If you have somebody, you're saying, hey, I need you over here in this system doing this thing. Oh, and oh, by the way, I need to track your time over here on this Excel spreadsheet. Whew, that's not going to work. That's, that is just not going to work. You're going to spend more time fighting the setup of the system than you are actually engaging in pro productive work. So if productivity as a variable in terms of time is critical to you, you got to have a system like this where the system bakes in time tracking um, as part of what you're doing. Um, my parents prepare personal income tax returns. Their system, while they're working on the return, has a timer. So every second that they're in that return, that timer ticks. And they can look and then get data at the end of that. They're not doing anything special. So what are the systems that you guys are using if, if this is your gauge, if this is part of your metric as productivity or efficiency, does it, is it able to track time uh, as part of that? This is uh, exactly what it says, employee resource utilization yesterday. Now, um, this is almost every person at Olivia on this, on this uh, x-axis here. What do you see is wrong with this? This is ours. No tasks. Okay. What? What? What did this? What did this person work yesterday? Uh, eleven. Oh, this says about you know, I don't know, ten and two thirds, maybe eleven hours. Uh, this is wrong. So you know what I did? I went and clicked on this person. This is Morgan M. I went and clicked, and she had a time entry in incorrectly. She had put three a.m. instead of three p.m. It's an innocent thing, right? There was no malevolence there, right? So you, you, you still have to involve the human element here of, of sort of spot checking this data. Because when I look and I see 11 hours, she shouldn't have been at work 11 hours yesterday. I got problems if she was at work for 11 hours yesterday, right? But so being able to go in there and easily uh, check it, backfill it, spot it, whatever, um, as part of that. Different teams will need different metrics. Oh, this is such like a, I call it, I call it business 101, right? Like, obviously, different teams, different people are going to need different metrics. I shouldn't have to tell you that if you're a leader, but it's amazing how many times leaders have blinders on and think that, well, that retail worker has to be in office, so the office worker has to be in the office. That's not, that's not the case, right? There's different teams need different metrics. There's different things apply. This is a concept, Jim Collins, good to great. Rigorous, not ruthless. We have rigor, we are disciplined. Disciplined people, disciplined thought, disciplined action. When it comes to executing on the mission, when it comes to remote work, when it comes to productivity, how are we being rigorous, not ruthless? My advice to you professionally is ask for help. Yeah, you should probably come up with some ideas, but if you're concerned about so-and-so being productive, remote working, I just be honest. Say, how can we, what kind of scoreboard can we establish for you to where you know you're winning? What is it? What do you want to track? And make that a conversation. This should not be draconian. It should not be thou shalt do X, Y, Z, right, out of the gate. It should be a conversation. We should be asking for help. So a lot of times, 
There's three variables to consider for you as a leader. And I would call it a balancing act. So the first one is, what's best for the customer? Now, what's happening in this picture right here? You all see this is candy. So is it best for the customer to have this person in the office or remote? There we go. It's intuitively obvious, right? We've used our common sense. This is clearly retail. Can't generally be done in this way with the person working remote. Use your brain, right? What's best for the employee? Well, you know, hey, I got a, I'm the employee here. I, my wife is in a wreck and she's out of work and I've got to take care of her and I got to take care of the kids, but I still want to work. I'm a good employee. What's best for that employee? Well, okay, now we got to get a little creative, right? If we're doing that. And then finally, what's best for the business? So again, thinking back to kind of our initial Venn diagram, this is what I would argue is another Venn diagram of you got to figure out, um, y'all familiar with the Benjamin Franklin balance sheet? It's real simple. Take a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle, pros, cons. What is best for the customer? Pros. Write them all down. Cons. What's best for the employee? Pros, cons. Real simple. Real simple exercise just to get your brain going. Um, my other advice to you is have a leadership team, right? Uh, have people that are a sounding board because you're going to make decisions that are not right. If you had just validated against somebody else, you would know. Sometimes, though, it can feel like this. It can feel like we're just trying to figure out awkward, weird calculus and we're Rodney Dangerfield and it's just confusing. So you got to sit and you got to think about it. So where does technology come in, right? So we're a technology company. Uh, we essentially sell tech support services solutions. So how have we seen technology leveraged? The, the lowest hanging fruit here is honestly voice, voice over internet protocols, your business phone as an app, business phone as uh, even a physical desk phone at your house, uh, a soft phone on your computer. So you answer the phone on the laptop the same way you'd answer the phone physically. I would imagine some of us, most of us maybe have this. This is a low hanging fruit. Uh, team Slack, Google Chat for real time or near real time communication. And this is the linchpin for us is ditching email for internal communications. Email is clunky and awkward and slow and is far more efficient in Team Slack or Google Chat. Generally, the only time we use email for internal comms is if we're emailing with an external vendor or something like that. You've got to kill email quickly internally. Absolutely. Because we have Teams, but we basically just use it for meetings. Mm -hmm. How is Teams any different from email? It's an internal email. Um, I don't have an inbox with 10,000 items in it. Okay. It's chat. Chats. It's, live it's live chat. Yep. My, me, personally, my work list is my email. And if somebody comes up to me and is like, hey, can you get me this? I will say, email that to me and I will get that done for you because that's my work list. Okay. But teams to me, and this is where you have to establish semantics within your organization too. It's like, what is safe to do in teams? What do we need to do in the, the line of business application that we use? And then what gets emailed, right? Because we haven't been able to get everybody to transition internally to teams that still email batting back and forth. And so. you will fight that forever mm -hmm. until... It's just gone. Well, <laughs> This, this, that's not a technology problem, right? Yeah, it's a people problem. Right? We get, we get clients, we'll sell them a solution. They're like, ah, it didn't work. I'm like, well, it's, you sent three Teams chats over the last six months. Of course it didn't work. You put three Teams chats on there. Like, you should have a ton more information in here for you to actually be leveraging that system, right, that solution. And that's a, that's a people issue. That's a whole other success yeah. in 90 on, right, like how you, how you realign that. SharePoint, OneDrive, Power Automate, Dropbox, Google Drive. Use something else other than let me work on this Word document. Let me email it to you. Let you work on that Word document. You email it to him. Let you work on that Word document. You email it to her. Well, who's got the most recent version? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I got one yesterday at 2.32 p.m. What, what, what was the timestamp on yours? So inefficient. Just throw it in SharePoint. Throw it in Teams even. Uh, and you can have it in one central spot and we can all look at it together. Have a cloud-first mentality. 
Does anybody here, ooh, this is embarrassing, maybe, potentially. Who is using cloud in some way, shape, or form? 365, line of business application, just about all of us, right? So as you're evaluating solutions, it needs to be cloud first. This means flexibility so for you and for your employees. Hey, I got a sick kid at home, but I'm still productive. I can still work. I'm just kind of babysitting them, getting them stuff, you know. Cool, yeah, go ahead. Just take your laptop home and go work. Hey, plumber's coming by. I got a problem. You know, toilet's not flushing. Plumber's coming by tomorrow at 9. Cool. Go work. What time do you think the plumber show up? You think they'll show up at 9? Yeah. Probably not, right? Um, and again, we, we rehash those metrics. We rehash that productivity conversation. A centralized system for clients that is not email or a spreadsheet. Um, I cannot tell you out of, you know, the 430-something clients we have, uh, probably 50% of them don't have a system for clients that's not email or a spreadsheet. Like, it is just super inefficient to have email or spreadsheet. I hope you all have some kind of other system for that. Uh, this is where I pull up my crystal ball and tell you what the future is. So Power Automate, anybody used Power Automate before? Incredible tool. If you have 365, Power Automate is amazing. This is a workflow that I built for a what used to be a manual process within our organization as we sold new clients. So so-and-so would have to get the company name and the email, and they'd have to take the template, make a copy, and make a new folder, and share the link, and email the client. This does all of that automatically in about three seconds. Right? Didn't take me much time to set this up. Yeah, I got to think a little bit logically as far as the workflow goes, but leveraging Power Automate, leveraging things like that to make you more productive, more efficient, um, that's where it's at. And what I mean when I say no code is I wrote no code in this. I literally just kind of dragged boxes in line of where they need to go and build the workflow, build the flow. Anybody use ChatGPT? Yeah, yeah, awesome. It is amazing. It is going to, um, I don't want to, you know, be dramatic, but it will, maybe I do want to be dramatic. ChatGPT will increase human efficiency dramatically. So I can go over and ask ChatGPT, hey, I've got a difficulty, I've got a, write me a collections email, uh, and I need this invoice due in 24 days, or, the, or we're going to cut off payment. And it produces the content for me. It's an incredible tool. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So how can you leverage things like this in your business uh, as we start thinking about remote work and hybrid work and that sort of stuff um, to make us more productive? <coughs> Any Peter Drucker fans in here? Yeah? What does this mean? In your own words, what does this mean? Anybody seen this at play? Melissa, you're nodding. Yeah. Strategies in the world and goals to attach to them, but if your company culture is not healthy and engaged, you don't have. If you only have people's uh, hands and feet, not their head and their heart, yep. that's the culture piece. Then strategies are going to fail. Yep. You're not reach your goals. Yep. Where we saw businesses fail with remote work is they they had a pretty marginal maybe culture to begin with. And they tried to take that marginal culture and then go remote. And what do you think happened? It was, the culture got worse, right? Like it wasn't well managed to begin with. And so then it's still not well managed. And it's more difficult to manage when we're remote. You can manage a fully remote work culture and have a great culture. There are businesses that do. You're part of one. I've seen some. But it's, it takes intention, right? Yes. Attention. It takes both. Right? So to be laissez-faire about it, it's not going to be good. What you reap, you will sow. Right? So if you're, if you're sowing, hey, this is, about, this is our mission statement. I, my job is to sow this mission statement in everything, in client interaction, in vendor interaction, in employee interaction, both me with the employee and employee to employee. It's got to be love people first. That's our mission if I'm not clear about that, or if the employee's not clear about that, all of a sudden cracks start to 
form and they get worse and resentment happens and it's, it's not good. So you've got to have a good culture for what I would say is excellence in any work, in office, hybrid, full remote, and that takes good people. So if you got remote workers, make sure you have metrics. You got to have the data. You got to know the data. You got to use the data, right? Like we, we have a tool that will track all this data and all these metrics, and we're, we're probably honestly only using about 10 to 15% of it. So we could do a lot more with it. What are you doing with the systems that you have? Or do you need to chuck the systems that you have and get a new one and look at, look at what you have that, that can be new? Um, I would say what helped us with remote work was uh, people need to be engaged on a regular cadence. Hey, we got a standing meeting this day, this time. Teams, um, y'all remember the whole thing with like camera on or camera off? You remember that? Um, my stance was just do whatever you want to do. Like I don't really care if your camera's on or off, but I was clear about that from the get-go. Right. The worst time to decide whether a camera on and camera off is right there in the middle of a meeting and one person has their camera off. That's the wrong time to decide our policy is camera on. Right? Like We need to communicate this and be proactive about this as part of our culture. you, you got to be able to trust. Anybody Patrick Lynchoni fan? Love Patrick Lynchoni. Uh, Five Dysfunctions of a Team is an amazing book. It, it's a, it, think of a pyramid. The base of the pyramid is we have to have trust. I have to be able to trust that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you have to be able to trust that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You have to have trust. You need to be able to trust, da, 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 but verify without seeming overbearing. I can go to this system, da, 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 Yes. Patrick Lynchoni, Five Dysfunctions of a Team. I can go to this system at any, I can pull this up on my phone, y'all and I can check it. Does that seem overbearing to the employee? No, I'm checking it, I'm verifying it, right? I'm trusting that work is getting done, but I have a mechanism to verify that work is actually functionally happening. Um, yeah, he, he, any Patrick Lynchoni book, I would say, is good. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> Culture is much harder to develop remotely, but it can be done. So I have a funny story about this. So <clears throat> when we went, uh, we basically went full remote when COVID happened. Um, and there was a group of people that used to eat lunch together every day. And they were like, hey, let's just, let's eat lunch on Teams. Let's get on a Teams call and eat lunch. And they did it one time and then they stopped doing it. <laughs> they were like, it was weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was just real awkward to see you there on the screen just munching it. And, you know, but, but what do they do when they're in person? They did the same thing, right? They sat across the table and ate with each other. You don't know when someone's going to talk. And then the yeah, right? But it's just weird. It's just real awkward. So some things translate fine to remote work. <laughs> Eating lunch, probably not so much. So it, can't, it can be done, but it's just harder. You know, it's just more difficult. I love this question, asking employees, What's important to you? Um, good example of this question. I'll, I'll steal this, this uh, example. Um, a company is trying to hire somebody and like they feel like they're th rolling out the red carpet for this person, right? Hey, relocation bonus. We're going to give you a company car. We're going to do all these things. And the guy's still like, he's not biting, right? He's not taking the offer. And the guy calls him at the company and says, hey, you know, what, what's important to you? In this job, what's important to you? And he said, well, you know, I got a wife, I've got two kids, and where this job is, you know, we've looked at the school system ratings, and they're just not great. And they said, the light bulb went off. It's like all this red carpet stuff that we did was not important to this person. So all this stress on the P&L, on the CFO to figure out this offer, had no relevance to this guy that was, a, that was looking to accept this offer. And the person at the company said, well, hey, you know what? <clears throat> I personally know of a school, one, you know, one city over, one county over, whatever, private school, could we structure a deal 
where you had the flexibility to take them to school and then we bumped your salary commiserate to, to where you could afford this tuition. Would you accept the offer? And he's like, 100% on the spot. So the company saved money and the guy got what he want by this question. So if you're f fighting with remote workers, do you have a mission? And are you asking the person, what's important to you? What is relevant to you? What's important? So here is us. So we are office first with a work from home option. So I would say we are hybrid. So 44 employees, uh, we have a down with the sickness op, um, which is basically any manager, if you come in with the sniffles, your manager can look at you and go, you're working from home today, get out. We don't want to spread your germies around the office. Right? So that's an interesting, to me, execution of a work from home policy is we encourage employees to self-select and say, hey, I'm not, I'm fine, I can be productive, I can do the same work, but I don't want to be around other people. We have an open, open concept office, so it's very open. So if you're sneezing, everybody's going to hear it, right? So uh, we have a SOP for that. If inclement weather's coming, we, we work from home. It's just, hey, snow's in the forecast tomorrow, take your laptop home, be prepared to work from home, right? Uh, we got a process for people working remotely, so when you're hired, you do not, out of the gate, get to, to work from home. You have to establish these things, then you can work from home, right? So we have th that structure, we have that proactively spelled out before we hit these issues and these problems um, that we have already established. What are the KPIs for that, if you could go into a little bit of detail? Like is it a productivity style to, uh, to be better to work from home? This, not really. Uh, it's more, well, yes. Secondarily, it's, it's the KPIs around productivity. When you first show up to work, frankly, I don't expect you to be productive for probably 30, 60 days yeah. in the work. I expect you to be productive in training. I expect you to be productive in learning. And our cadence, uh, we're working on an LMS, but we have not set up a way for people to get trained without being with someone else, right? And it's much easier to do in person in the office, you know, than it is necessarily remotely. Really, we have indexed this to time. So time on the job is how we've done it. That's not the most mature way to do it, I don't think. I think we have a ways to go there. But for now, Next yeah, hey, have you been here for two months? You've done these three things with these people. You know what your job entails now. Now we, now we work on the KPIs. Now we work on the metrics, <coughs> the productivity, the efficiency, that sort of stuff. And again, we got the metrics. We know we have the data to know whether you're being productive or not. We don't cancel meetings just because somebody's work from home that day, just because somebody's got a sick kid, just because somebody's... Now, it's different. If you've got a sick kid and you've got to take care of your sick, sick kid, take time off. We encourage that. Do that. We have a flexible PTO policy to do that. But meetings are still there. Just because so-and-so is not there, we're going to continue with our group lead meeting. We're going to continue and use technology, right? If you don't have... Do what? Y'all can't really use that as, as an answer. Yeah, right. <laughs> At least I hope not. Um, but, you know, I mean, and the conference room tech is coming down. It, it's, you know, depending on what you get, setups like this are kind of pricey. But, I mean, at this point, every laptop has a camera on it. Every phone has a camera on it. So you should be able to make a meeting, right? Um, I, I, I think something that's real important for us is our, our call center folks use phones the exact same way in the office that they do at home. There is no difference. It is the same setup, same thing. They don't have to fiddle with cords. They don't have to run a cable to their router. They didn't know any of that stuff. It works the same way. I don't have different setups. What do you do about, because I know like being on the phone, talking to like different in different industries, and when I hear people on the phone and I hear like pets or dogs or things in the, their background, how do you manage that? Um, because clearly it's like, okay, well, you're clearly working from home because I hear your dog barking in the background. Yeah. I would, I, would, I would say before COVID, people would be like, what? But to me now, I'm like, I'm on the phone with vendors, yeah. you know, that we're spending six figures with a year, and there's a dog barking in the background. I'm like, oh, what kind of dog you got? People I can't understand, and then I'm like, you know, I'm going to figure something out. Yeah. Like, I'm talking, I'm dealing with other things. Yeah. Like personal things. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that's just sort of clarity and saying, hey, it seems like maybe now might not be the best time. Can we reschedule this or something like that, right? Um, in terms of, you know, uh, what I'm sort of battling right now is we are getting occasional complaints. So we have some clients in the room here uh, that are saying, hey, we can, we can hear the laughter and things that are going on in the office, right? So now we have the opposite problem, <laughs> which is the office is a little too noisy. Uh, and that can be solved with technology, right? Hey, get a better headset, you know, get a noise canceling mic, those sorts of things uh, to cancel that out. Um, now, and we use, I think I mentioned this before, we use Teams SharePoint for internal comms. <clears throat> and, and just to be totally transparent with you, um, I am, uh, it was interesting that I got asked to do this one because I would have said I'm probably pretty, you know, don't take offense, but old school in my thinking. Like, I want you in the office. I want you here. I did not set out to build a remote work culture when I started Alivia. That was not it. I wanted to build an interactive teaching, training, learning, serving culture, right? And the best way that I saw that was to be in person. Have I had to readjust and realign my expectations? What do you think? Yes, you should too. In this day and age, if you have people in your organization that are old school, you got to bring them. You, you got to sometimes drag them, kicking and screaming, you got to drag them along. So what is my role as a leader? I got to keep the focus on the mission. Love people, manage tech. I got to point everything back to that. If your mission statement is, our mission is to serve and honor the customer through profitability and dependence on modern solutions, Nobody's going to get behind that. Nobody. You should be able to call an employee at 3 in the morning, wake them up from a dead slumber and say, what's our mission? And they need to be able to tell you. If they can't do that, go back and work on your mission. You have to figure out what your mission is first and keep your focus on that. That will set your course in really any decision, but hybrid and remote work especially. Some of y'all in this room probably work with outliers. You know, what, what are the, what, the metrics say this person actually worked from home seven days last month, and the next closest one was two. Why? Is everything okay? I don't default to negativity first. I'm going to say, hey, what, what's going on? This is a Simon Sinek thing, right? Like, hey, what, how can I help you? What's going on? Is something going on in your life, you know, that, that's causing you um, to be an outlier? And I spend time working with them. My job, I mean, I, I don't take the calls anymore, right? I, mean, I was a one-man band, uh, a chuck in a truck kind of thing, and, you know, I showed up, I did the work, shook the hand, got the check, put the check in my back pocket, and drove off to the next one, right? That's how I started. I don't do that work anymore, right? So my job functionally as a leader is now I got to care for those who care for the clients. And if I don't care about the ones who care for the clients, what do you think the net result is going to be for the client? They're not going to feel cared for. They're not going to feel the mission. Love people, manage tech. If that's my mission and I treat everybody like garbage and have them do ridiculous song and dances to productivity metrics, that's not, that's not fulfilling the mission. Another Lynchoni book, The Advantage. Uh, one of the tenets that he talks about in that book is abdication of leadership. Um, you have to be present and be there as a leader for your organization. Whether you are at the top, whether you are in the middle, um, whether you're at the bottom, wherever you are in the structure of the org chart, you need to lead. What if you have people that can't work remote? You gotta be honest. That's, that's the key. That's the hybrid part. Yep. Because our work model is almost identical to yours. Yep. But because we do have metrics in place, there are people who are not productive. Right. Right. And then now there's the people where you are. Yeah. And then are they getting punished because you're like, I need you in the office more mm -hmm. because you're trying to teach them the habits that they need that they can use at home. Right. But what is it at home? Like, I already know I've got a puppy that will distract me constantly at home. <laughs> I prefer to be in the office. Yeah. Because she's begging for attention the whole time and it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work for me. I don't have a dog that sits at my feet all day and 
something more, and that's it. But that is the hardest part about hybrid, and what I want to do is, you know, do they not have a good work set up so that they can't be successful at home? I mean, maybe it's that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, do we try to help them with that, or is it a lot of our younger generation, everybody wants to go home because that just seems cool, mm -hmm. you know, but they aren't productive at home because they're not knowledgeable enough. Right. You know, they're still trained. Right. And that's, that's where the productivity to the mission comes in play. Are you serving the mission? When you're working from home, we still got this mission we got to fulfill, which means that you have to engage with these productivity metrics and look at the data. I have it right here. It's not my opinion. It's facts on this sheet. Here's how many files you closed. Here's how many calls you made, whatever. The data shows what's happening here. What do you want to do, right? What's important to you? Right? Is what's important to you your puppy at home, to steal your example a little bit, or is it work, right, that you're getting paid to do? A hundred percent. Yep. Unconsciously competent. I love that. Isn't there a time for, I mean, it's not going to be a puppy forever. So, you know, like eight months, that might not be a problem. Yeah, it's like four years later. Okay. Well, but. so, I, I, you know, pie, pie in the sky is every employee is bespoke. You have metrics that are custom to every single employee. That's pie in the sky. Every employee has a scoreboard. Can that functionally be done? Certainly not in our organization. We, we, we're not well um, machined enough to have that. That's my goal. I want to get there, and we're driving towards that. But um, for every person to have metrics and know what they are and be held accountable to them is the gold standard. But then you have to start making some trade-offs, right? You have to start saying, well, this is this team's metric. How do I manage that, compare that data versus in office or at home? And it, ideally, it's bespoke. Ideally, it's custom. Again, focus on the mission. If your mission is in-person retail sales, you know, hey, Mr. Miss New Hire, I get that you used to do hybrid. I get that you used to do remote at your previous employer. This is our mission, is to serve people face-to-face -face and give them a pleasant experience in our store. And I'm sorry, you just can't work remote. Then it's not about their productivity. Then it's not about this. It's about the mission. The mission is the sword that determines whether you fall this way or fall that way, right? You, 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 you slice that mission you slice every decision with that mission, and the answer ideally becomes intuitively obvious. Okay. Yes, ma'am. In your organization, missions like values. Yes, yeah, so we have. It seems like your mission is very value oriented. Yep, we have we have values. We have five values. Mm -hmm. um, we um, I just had an annual review with an employee yesterday. That entire review was based on those values. Mm -hmm. We threw metrics in, but the but the functional rating that that employee received was based on the values. We award, we have the, I thought about bringing it in. It's like a, y'all know um, Flava Flav, the big time clock thing. We got one of those that's the Alivia A on a big chain and we call it the Alivia Values chain, right? And so employees give that to one another and recognize another person for a particular value and hey, they knocked it out of the park with we before me and here's how I saw them do that. Here's how I saw them demonstrate being an eager learner. They just killed it this week. They were awesome, right? So we have that baked in and built in. So yes, we have the mission, and then we have the values, which is how you support that mission. And then the metrics and productivity stuff, you know, below that, the actual data. Use common sense. Thank you. You know, yes, 100%. Use common sense. Client right here. Uh, you know, if, if your mission is fixing cars, uh, there's, Maybe some remote work that can be done with scheduling and calling clients and that sort of stuff. But if I got to spin wrenches, I probably can't work remote, right? Use common sense. Uh, you got, this is one that I struggle with personally, is communicate well both corporately and individually. And ideally your comms are the same. <laughs> You're not telling one group of people something and telling another group of people something different. It's consistent. Uh, and I have people in Olivia in the organization that will hold me accountable to that. And I have had to eat crow before and go back to people and say, 
I told you wrong and I apologize. This is what I actually meant to say. So what if you have people that are working remote and you want them back in the office? Ask them, what's important to you? My buddy who wants to stay working from home, but his employer wants him in the office. What's important to you? Can we make a bespoke role? Can we make a custom role for this? Can we realign some of your metrics so that you can be remote, either permanently or temporarily, for whatever's going on in your life? Hey, I just had a, you know, my wife, we got a, we got a, a newborn. Um, it'd be great if I could work from home for a while. Okay. How do we do that? What can we do uh, to build that? Go back to the balancing act. What's best for the customer? What's best for the employee? What's best for the business? Those need to help you arbitrate this decision. And again, you got to point to the mission, not the manager. If you got a group that everybody's in office because that manager wants everybody in the office because their management style is gauging productivity by walking around, and you've got another manager who lets everybody work from home, what do you think is going to happen? It's not going to be pretty, right? It's not going to be good, right? So we need to have consistency. We need it to be about the mission and not the emotional state of the manager on any given day, right? <clears throat> this, is, this is advice that if I could go back in time, I would <laughs> give myself, take it slow, make changes, make adjustments, but be flexible. And you need to communicate that and say, hey, I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it for a while and we're gonna see. And we're gonna establish a scoreboard and we're gonna develop metrics together and we're gonna see, uh, see how we do this, what happens. Here's your biology. Inter-individual touch can be a desirable reward that can both relieve negative effect and evoke strong feelings of pleasure. So when you give somebody a high five, your brain chemically is reducing negative emotion and increasing positive emotion. Can you give a high five via Teams? Kinda. <laughs> you, you kinda can, but the way that we are created Biologically, you have touch. And so when you take that away, you are removing an element of biology. Now, neurochemically, maybe for some people, that thumbs up on that post that I made in Teams gives me the same thing. But for some people, it might not. They may really struggle with not having that pat on the back, not having that high five, good job, fist bump. Good job. Let's go. oh, elbow bump was my favorite during COVID. Let's elbow bump. Um, it's just it's just different. But we were created, and this is science. Neurochemically, things happen in your brain when you touch somebody, when you give them a high five, when you give them a fist bump. <clears throat> Y'all familiar with King Frederick's experiment? So this was a Sicilian king in the 13th century. Um, wanted to run an experiment on babies and not talk to them and see what language they developed. Of course, he thought it would naturally be his own language. Um, as a secondary rule, the wet nurses were not permitted to touch the child, the, the, the babies, in as much as, as possible, right? They got to eat. But what do you think happened to the babies? They died. They died. Now, medically today, we call it failure to thrive, but they died. Well, they were fed, so physically their needs were met. Why did they die? There is a neurochemical necessary for your development that comes with touch. If you have somebody who is alone, they're not married, they're struggling in their personal life, do you think working remote is the best thing for them? Probably not, right? So this is where we have to develop, you know, in my mind, certain spiritual, emotional sensitivity as leaders to say, what is best for people? Are you providing for your employees' basic need to be loved? I don't care if you're in the office or not, you should be doing that. They should feel love they should feel cared for if you've got that figured out then logically you can figure out how to do it remote right is any work an encouragement or a frustration to them 
If they're not getting high fives or fist bumps or any of that stuff in your organization, you have other issues. Remote work, you want to pin the tail on the donkey and say, well, remote work's the problem. Well, that's probably not it. It could be a symptom of a larger illness, um, which can manifest over time. But ultimately, you have to figure these out first before you move on to that remote work. So what are the best doing? The best leaders listen more than they talk. You should be asking questions of your employees, of your team. Hey, what do you think? And you know what? Overwhelmingly, resoundingly, uh, the people at Olivia say, we love being in the office. I, it feels like I'm working with family was one of my favorite. Working with friends was one of my one. Now, we, we have to work on other things, right? How to hold your friends accountable to data and to metrics, right? But it's about the mission. It's about serving our clients. Best policies are clear but flexible. So you have clarity. You have defined what those policies are. You've thought about them beforehand. Other people have vetted them internally. You know what's best uh, in that Venn diagram, employees, customers, business. Uh, communicate. So many times leaders, I feel like it's just a one-way trip, and there's never any asking. So you have to develop that skill uh, to figure that out. You know, uh, I, I don't know that you know this, but <coughs> work will never be perfect. Shocker. Um, perfection isn't the goal. How do we integrate work and life? That's the goal. Uh, Lynn Shoney has a great podcast on this, talking about work-life balance. It's not really work-life balance that we're necessarily after. We're after how do we integrate our work and life? How do I bring my whole self to work and not put on a mask and be exhausted when I get home or vice versa, right? How do I integrate the two? Freedom within a framework. Ideally, if your team can make decisions and hold each other accountable, you don't have to get involved. But you have to establish the framework. And the framework has to be about the mission, has to be about your values. And you got to remember, winners want to win. So if you're having to, you know, fight with somebody and drag them kicking and screaming, is there another issue there? Is there another problem? Again, remote work is the symptom, but it's not necessarily the illness. Um, I don't see us uh, ever being full remote. And I have made that clear to my team. I've made that to new hires. It's just that's not, that's not us. That's not who we are. Um, I love that we have the flexibility for our team to be remote if they need to. And they use that. They leverage that. They take advantage of that. Remember that statistic, 87% of respondents said if they had the option, they'd take it. We do. Now, I have a couple people that are kind of like you. They've said, I will not work from home. Like, they fought me during COVID. They were like, can I just, can I just like, come in? Like, nobody needs to know. I'll just come in and work, right? And it's like, okay, well, as long as we can sort of make adjustments and that sort of thing, sure, it's bespoke. It's custom. We have freedom within a framework. Um, thank you very much. That is all I have today. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to hang out afterwards. But my hope and admonishment and encouragement to you is that uh, it's got to be about the mission. It's got to be about your culture. And then it becomes easier to arbitrate uh, decisions on hybrid and remote work. So thank you very much. Thank you.